Hello and welcome back to XYZ. In this tutorial, we are going to create an infinite loop. And this will not just loop after the render is finished, but while the whole animation is rendered. So for instance, our loop might only be around 300 frames long, while the whole animation is going for 3000 frames. We can then hide the looping nature with volumetrics, particles and mesh manipulation. Since we will be using animation nodes in Svechok for the creation of the loop, it can easily be adjusted later on, since we will keep everything procedural as much as possible. Since this tutorial ended up being quite long, I decided to split it into two parts. So let's jump to infinity and beyond. So right away, we head over into Svechok nodes. Create a new node tree. And we start off with a cylinder node. And we can hit uh, Ctrl and click the cylinder node. So it will show up in the 3D viewport. And on this cylinder, I don't want a bottom and top cap. So we get rid of that. And I would like to control the height of the cylinder and the subdivisions of the cylinder at the same time. So I bring in a number node. I would like to have one more subdivision now in the C direction, since I would like to uh, subdivide it based on the blender units. So this has a height of two blender units. And every blender unit I'd like to have uh, an edge loop in there. So we can set this to add. And just add that in. And when we link that up, Swatchik will give us an error since the parallels will need an integer value and we feed it in a float so we can convert that. And then we have a subdivision for every uh, Blender unit. So when I increase that to 10, we see that our tube has an edge loop at every Blender unit. But we can also increase the subdivisions in between. And we can just do that with a multiply node. Then we head on. And we bring in a triangulate node. And we select both nodes and just hit V. And that way, vertices, edges, and polygons are linked up at the same time, and we don't have to do that separately. When we look at it with the viewer, we see that. It just triangulates the whole mesh. The next node will be a dual mesh node. And we select it again and hit V. And what that does is it creates hexagons out of our triangle mesh. But right now, there are some triangles left at the bottom and top of the tube, and I would like to get rid of them. So we can head over into the analyzer section and use a component analyzer node. We set that to sites number. Then we can hook up our faces. And this will output how many sides 
the individual polygons have. So we can use that with a logic functions node. And that way we can see if a polygon has six sides. And if it has, this node will output a true boolean. If it doesn't, then the boolean will be false. And this, again, we can use with a list mask out node. And we link up our faces into the data input. And our logic output goes into the mask. And we can use the data true output of this list mask node to link up into the polygons. And we have to set this list mask out node to level lists two, otherwise it won't work. And then we just got rid of the triangles on top and they should also be gone on the bottom. So right now this isn't an actual mesh. We can see there is nothing generated in our outliner. This is just a temporal viewer that we can look at. So we get rid of that and go into the this section and bring in a mesh viewer. This one will generate an actual mesh that we can then manipulate further. And when we look at the polygon or the normal, where the normals are facing, so they face outward right now. And since we want our camera to move through this tube, we want them to point inward. So we need a flip normal node. We bring that in between here, between the triangulate mesh and the dual mesh node. We set that to mask and then to reverse. And that way our normals are now pointing inward. Let's get rid of the face orientation. And I would also like later on our camera to travel down the X direction. So when we hit the matrix button down here, we can rotate our cylinder by 90 degrees, but not in the C direction but let's rotate it in the y direction. And that way it points down the C axis. And let's rename that. And make sure it is part of the objects collection that I already prepared. It doesn't matter what you call your collections, as long as you find your objects again, you should keep your scene as tidy as possible to know where you can find stuff. And what we can also do with collections is we can right click them and say instance to scene. And that way we get a perfect instance of whatever is in this collection. So once we add more and more stuff into this collection, it will always be instanced to all of our copies. So we make one more instance and offset it on both ends. And we see that our cylinder 
lost a bit of height. This comes from the dual mesh node. Because of that, our cylinder is now not a full 10 blender units long. It is just a little bit shorter. But we can offset that by just using a multiply node. And we can just eyeball it and bring it closer together so we don't have a gap in between. But also we are not overlapping by too much. If you are overlapping too much then that could be really noticeable. But this is close enough. And we see also that our uh, hexagons are pretty stretched and we can battle that by just increasing the twist. This way our hexagons will be more uniform. But we have to make sure that the ends align. And we can just eyeball that again. And that way we have a procedural tube that our camera can travel down and we can use to create our infinite loop out of. So the next thing will be we head into animation nodes and create our camera rig. And I don't want the camera to just uh, travel down the X direction uh, linearly, but I want it to make a spiral motion while it goes down our tube. And for that we have to create a spiral curve that the camera can follow first. Let's get rid of our objects for now. And I bring in a Bezier curve. And I head into edit mode and set this to poly. And I scale it up by 5. So it has the exact length of our tube. And with that it can loop seamlessly. And in animation nodes I will get an evaluate spline node. And our curve will help us uh, define the length of our spiral. And I would like to loop through these matrices that come out of the evaluate spline node. And I set this to range count and limit the amount to 10 for now. And I will need a loop. with a matrix list input. And it should also output a matrix list. And now we will offset our matrices. And the offset matrix node has some advanced node settings and I would like to disable 
the use matrix list since we are working with a single matrix. And first I want to rotate it. We can set that to local and we can duplicate it and set it to location. And I would like to use local axis here as well. And the offset should be in the local C direction. So we need to rotate our matrices first. And we rotate it around the X axis. And we will need to create a EULA for that. And we use degree. And we will need to do some math for this to work. So we subtract one from the iterations. Then we will do a division and divide 360 degrees by our new iterations. And then we multiply this result by our index. And this should give us a perfect spiral down the x-axis. And we can expose the offset of our spiral so we can change that easily later on. And with these matrices, we can decompose them. And now use the vectors to generate a spline out of. Let's first run a smooth Bezier node. So the curve or spline isn't uh, janky since that will be noticeable uh, in the camera movement later on. Then we can output that spline into an object. And here we have it and we can use this to constrain our camera too. We definitely want to increase the resolution now, since this will also be noticeable in the camera movement. If we don't have enough resolution, it will look too janky when the camera moves. So we get in a new camera. And in the constraint section, we go to follow path. We grab our path and when we increase or decrease the offset value, our camera moves along our spiral. But right now our camera is looking in a single direction. And I would like to control that with another constraint. We can do a track to. And for that, I bring in an empty. And I let the camera look at this empty. Uh, 
but right now we would have to uh, keyframe this offset but we can also control it with animation notes so we can right click it and copy data path and in animation nodes we bring in an attribute output node we grab the camera we paste in the path and then we can set the value in animation nodes and i use the time info node then bring in a math node and we set this to modulo and 300 and what this modulo function does is it returns the remainder of a division so you see when our frame count increases let's make the animation longer and the moment we hit 300 it starts over at zero again and moves up to 300 again until we reach 600 and then it starts over again so with the modulo function we now are constrained to a range of 0 to 300 and we can never get out of this it will always start over at 0 again and we can use that and do a map range on this so now that we know it goes from 0 to 300 and we need 0 to minus 100 we suddenly get a camera motion over our spiral in exactly that frame count and it starts over again once it hits the 300 but right now the look at constraint empty isn't moving and we need to move that as well and we can bring in a transform output node and we want to transform the location we grab the empty so we need to combine a vector and we grab the map range node and grab our modulo result in this one we want to move between 0 and 10 in the x direction and this way we have pretty interesting camera movement without it just traveling straight down the x-axis and it also loops seamlessly so when we bring back our tube we see that it is a bit too small but since we are working procedurally we can just change that whenever we want so I bring in another number node and I do that because I can control the end and start radius independently and in this case I don't want that I want to control both at the same time and so I don't have to change two values constantly I do it just this way and we can also increase our meridians so our hexagons are uh, uniform or more uniform again and when we when we look down our camera and we hit play 
we see that it loops. But we also see that we have some pop in to battle this we just make some more instances of our uh, objects collection The pop-in will never go away fully this way, but we can hide that further by using some volumetrics or particle effects later on. And we can also bring in a float and link up all of these values. And with that, we can control how long the loop will be. We can make it really fast or really slow, depending on what we need in the end. And we can also push out our look at empty a bit further so we can let it move between 5 and 15. And this way we can change how the camera movement behaves. And we can change that at any time we want this is not set in stone we can just change a few values and if we had keyframed all of this we would have to go in and change all of the keyframes constantly and shift them around and this way you have everything in one place and it's rather easy to change that and the output min and max is exactly 10 units apart since our tube is uh, 10 units long and also our spiral is 10 units long and if you make any of this longer you have to adjust for this in here as well so, so you have to move the empty exactly the same distance as your tube is long and your spiral is long so otherwise it will not uh, loop seamlessly you will notice a jump when the loop ends and starts anew so you have to keep that in mind this all has to uh, sync up in length Thank you for watching so far and see you over in part two.